la taille, mon bébé. Thank you, DC. I'm a department for internal security and national administration. I'm all for all. Member of Parliament. Do you see that in the of salons? Sir, uh, without much ado, I just want to inform the acting vice chancellor who has just joined us, senior government officers, the only thing that I have to see you here this morning. Sir, sir, I think that. We are only able to accommodate 2,000 students out of the about 10,000. That means 8,000 are living. They put the, the, the team in the house, but they won't say their names. Rather, I would request them. We decided to introduce the Sierra County Security Team. We have the staff, which is Sipu Komara. We have David Petino. David, David is the county, is the prison's commander of Sierra County. And myself is Jim Joker, county commissioner Sierra Sir. Yes, Director of Security, Dr. Reo Mondo, uh, provincial administration led by Madam Floyd. I was here to join on behalf of uh, the MP for Bondo, who, as you know, was uh, atten attending a disciplinary meeting for ODM. Hopefully, it'll finish and get back home. On my behalf, Ray, this team of yours, it is because of them that all of us are safe when we sleep at home. It's because of them that the country can sleep knowing that there are men and women taking care of the administration and security, both in the villages in the locations and sublocations. So allow me to congratulate you on behalf of our country, our beautiful country, for the work that you do on our behalf. And I'm sure this time round, you know, you have a PhD, who is a PhD holder. Me, I only have one master's. You know, the PhD, uh, the PhD is a PhD holder. So I'm sure in terms of empowerment, in terms of academic empowerment, in terms of improving what you have, it will be at the fore, forefront to ensure we have the best men and women to take care of us. On behalf of myself, on behalf of the people of GAME, I want to again congratulate you for what you have done for government. The last couple of weeks, when the country was going through a difficult process, I know how difficult it was, but it is for us to go back home and preach to our people. There is no need uh, to be annoyed with each other because of political differences. What is important is to have so great. Remember, revenge belongs to who? The Lord. Ours is to listen to the call of the Lord that in His own mightiness we can find peace in the work we do. May the good Lord that I worship bless you and more importantly bless the people of Game are here. Thank you. Our chief guest, sir, uh, PS, Internal Security and National Administration.
a member of parliament for GEM, uh, the members of the regional security team, the county security team who are present here, uh, deputy county commissioners, ACCs, chiefs and assistant chiefs, good morning. I'm Jambo. So we are very delighted to have you this morning with us. Your visit here is very, very timely. Uh, we have come from a very difficult moment in this region. Um, and from the onset, I wish to take this opportunity to congratulate all our officers for a job well done. Um, I know uh, many of us are not in very high spirits, considering that uh, we have had one of our chief's homes burnt down by that. I believe the rest of the chiefs, particularly in this region or this particular Bondo sub-county, may be afraid that uh, they might be the next target. Sir, 11 of our police stations were attacked by demonstrators last week. Um, we had 48 police officers who were injured during that time. We had 17 members of the public who were attacked or injured. 14 of our police vehicles were damaged by the rioters during that moment. And therefore, sir, your visit is very, very timely. I believe by the time we finish this meeting, these officers will be energized and they feel already that you care about us and that is the reason why we took time out of your busy schedule to come and visit our chief and also have a word with the other administrators and the police officers, commanders who are present here, sir. So with those few remarks, I wish to take this opportunity to invite you to address the members present here, sir. Welcome. You may be seated. the Regional Commissioner, Nyanza Region, the Regional Police Force for Nyanza Region, the Regional Security Team present here, the County Security Team for Sierra County, the administrators, particularly those who are coming from Sierra County, and uh, senior officers and colleagues from the Ministry of Interior, and National Administration, the MP for Game Constituency, the Honorable Elisha. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning again. Good morning, sir. Now, because of the elaborate program that we have with the administrators, as well as uh, the security officers, I will make a few remarks at least for the benefit of our brothers and sisters from the media. And then after that, I would want to request that you excuse yourself so that then we can proceed with the rest of the, of the deliberations. So first is to appreciate uh, all officers who are seated here on behalf of the rest of your colleagues from across the length and breadth of the country because you continue to do and perform a very significant uh, role for the administration of President William Ruto. And that role is service to the people at the various levels of administration, right from the villages to the sub-locations, the locations, to the divisions, all the way up to the regions. And uh, this morning, while with the President and uh, the Minister for Interior, I sought their permission to come and meet you today and they said that they appreciate 
the role that you continue to play and that I reaffirm to you that you have the support and the backing of the President in the role that you continue. Now, part of the reason why I'm here today and uh, with the regional security team and also with the leadership from this county is that uh, we have had a series of actions that have raised the temperatures in the country, but more so in this region. And in the process, we've had loss of lives, we've had destruction of property, and this has largely been perpetrated by criminal elements who have taken advantage of the situation. Of course, it has not been helped, or the situation has been made worse, by pronouncements from various leaders. And we are at a point where we need to ask ourselves the very difficult questions whether that is the way we want to continue as a country or not. And if you're a country that is democratic, that abides by the rule of law, then we must be able to bring back sanity and insist that we follow the law. And we insist that nobody is above the law. It doesn't matter how big you are, it doesn't matter how small you are. And it is also important to guard against blowing things out of proportion. And to me, this is where our friends from the media need to come in and support. You must remain objective, you must be impartial in how you report whatever goes on. And we can go on and on and on, but probably that is not necessary for today. But the most important thing is that we must abide by the rule of law. And there's no debate about that. So when people protest, of course, the constitution is very clear. They must be unarmed. It has to be peaceful. Anything to the contrary borders on criminal action. And whenever there are criminal actions, again, we go back to the same constitution. And we would be expecting all of you who are charged with the responsibility of maintaining law and order just to follow the law. So if someone has destroyed property, if someone has looted, we must take them through the due process of the law. Now, As administrators and as security officers, you are the first point of contact that the government has with the people. And how you carry yourself basically reflects on the government. And because you are professionals, you are well trained, at all times we must endeavor to carry our responsibilities with the diligence, with responsibility, so that we continue to discharge the services that the citizens expect of us. Yesterday, I, give, I did give a breakdown on what the effect of the demonstrations have been, and I think it will not help to start to regurgitate those numbers. But the point is that uh, as a security agencies, we have 
taken the greatest hit in terms of casualties, in terms of uh, injuries to officers, and it is something that we cannot allow to continue. Because if we stall police officers, if we ban police vehicles, if we vandalize police stations, the question I would ask any other ordinary Kenyan or any other leader is where does that take us? Because naturally, if there's a problem, the first point of call will be a police station, will be a chief's camp, so that you are sorted out. Now, if we allow ourselves to denigrate those institutions, to make it difficult for these hardworking professional Kenyans to discharge their responsibilities, I think for me that is where we draw the line. And I would want to make a special appeal to our leaders that we need to be mindful so that if you are going to demonstrate or if you are going to ask Kenyans to go out and demonstrate, let's follow the law. It has to be peaceful, the police must be notified, we need to know between what time and what time are you doing your demonstration. How long and how many people? And as we do that, where the rights stop is where the rights of the others who or have a contrary opinion begin. And we cannot use the freedom to picket, to trample on the rights of the rest of Kenyans who do not want to participate in, in, in the demonstrations or in the processes that you, you undertake. And lastly, for me, is the use of violence to pass points or to communicate. It cannot be in this day and age that whenever there is a disagreement, whenever you are unable to persuade people to have your viewpoint, then you resort to violence. I dare say it shows the highest level of primitivity. Persuade me, persuade Kenyans to look at things the way you want, and if they don't agree, let them be. But it cannot be that if I don't agree with you as a PS, the only solution you have is to burn my house, or the only solution is to beat me. And it is something that I want to throw back all of us that if even in schools we stopped caning children, how dare you beat a grown up simply because he does not agree with your viewpoint? It's the highest level of primitivity and we must get away from it. Thank you and uh, with those many remarks I would ask that you allow us to proceed with the rest of the program. Sir, I think that